Carvana is on track to hit all time high revenue, and yet its stock price is less than half of what it was three years ago. There is a noticeable disconnect between stock price and revenue. In fact, just a year and a half ago, Carvana was down 99%, even though its annual revenue was only down about 25%. If you bought Carvana when it was at $4 per share and rode it back up to $160 today, then congratulations, you made a lot of money. But the next question is, will Carvana get back to $340 per share? To answer this question, I read over 500 pages of Carvana's financial reports over the last three weekends, and I compiled all the data into pretty graphs so we can easily see and understand what are the trends. Let's go. First, I wanna look at the statement of cash flows. A company will divide its cash flows into three major categories. You've got your operations, you've got your financing, you've got your investing. A growing company will typically have negative net cash flow from operations and from investing. This is the case with Carvana from 2017 to 2022. They will have a negative cash flow from operations because they haven't quite reached their economy of scale and they will have a negative cash flow from investing because more money will be leaving the company for investing purposes than it will be coming in, right? They're trying to expand into multiple markets. So they have negative cash flows for operations, negative cash flows for investing. Where's the cash coming from? Coming from financing. They're taking on debt, they're issuing stock. This is what is fueling their growth early on. And then in 2023, we see a flip. Now they have positive cash flow from operations and they have negative cash flow from financing. This means they might actually be putting more money back into their debts than they are creating new debts. To understand why Carvana's share price took such a nosedive at the end of 2021 and beginning of 2022, you can start to understand that by looking at the statement of cash flows. Carvana took on a lot of debt between those two years. You can see that red bar is much bigger than the previous years. And then their cash from operations was very negative in 2021. Not quite as bad in 2022, but still much more than previous years. And then the blue bar is quite big. That is the cash from investing. That isn't necessarily bad. In this case, in May of 2022, Carvana acquired Adisa or Adesa. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Adisa is a vehicle auction business that has 56 locations in the United States. So Carvana will be able to benefit greatly being more spread out, having more access to multiple markets, more efficiently being able to buy cars in this location, fix them up, and then turn it around without having to ship vehicles across the United States. So this is a good purchase for future growth. However, they had to fund this future growth somehow, and it certainly wasn't from cash from operations because that was also heavily in the negative. So they borrowed a lot of money and they issued a lot of stock. This is probably a big reason why Carvana's stock price dropped so heavily. The next chart I wanna bring up is Carvana's profit by year going back to 2017. This chart, once again, kind of reinforces the idea why Carvana's share price dropped off so much between 2021 and 2022. Well, shareholders were obviously expecting Carvana to lose a lot of money in 2022, and they did. They lost $1.587 trillion dollars and then we're seeing Carvana's share price rebound quite a bit as they are showing profit. They have shown a profit in 2023 and they have shown profit so far in 2024. Now the actual profit that I'm showing in 2024, this is from the first two quarters and then I'm projecting their profit in the second two quarters in the 2024 projected column. I'm just extrapolating forward if they have the same profit in the first half of the year in the second half, then that will be their, their projected profit. After looking at the statement of cash flows and the profit by year, it looks like Carvana's rebound is justified. After all, in the statement of cash flows, we saw the net cash from operations flipping from negative to positive and sustaining so far. And on the profit chart, they have flipped from negative profit or losses. Now they have positive gains. On the surface, this is all looking pretty good, but I had a hunch that Carvana had some dirty secrets lurking beneath. So first thing I wanna look at is the consolidated statement of operations. And there are two line items that jump out at me right away. One of them being gain on debt extinguishment, a gain of $878 million. This more than two times over accounts for their total profits in 2023. What is this gain on debt extinguishment? Basically Carvana had a chunk of debt that was going to be due for payment in the near future that they weren't gonna be able to afford. They were risking 
having to go into bankruptcy. So they renegotiated their debt with their creditors in exchange for kicking the can down the road, making it due at a later date, and they reduced the total amount of debt. In exchange for those two things, Carvana made the debt secured, meaning they tied it to their assets, and they now have a slightly higher interest rate. So really, they didn't gain 450 million. They had a one-time debt restructuring that wasn't done from a place of strength. It was done from a place of weakness, a place of necessity. Otherwise, they would have lost $428 million that year, which makes their profit graph look much different. Next, if we look at their profits that they're showing for the first two quarters of 2024, they are making $46 million. However, once again, when I go to the breakdown, they have a one-time gain of $53 million, which is titled Unrealized Gain on Warrants to Acquire Root Class A Common Stock. So a warrant is essentially a call option. So they have the option to buy shares of Root, and Root is the insurance company that Carvana partners with. And these are unrealized gains. They basically have these options to buy stock that are currently up in value at the moment. They didn't suddenly become profitable, they just have a one-time event that's just barely pushing them up into profitability. So that one maybe is a little bit nitpicky, but $53 million does wipe out their profit for the year so far in 2024. Now I wanna look at the statement of cash flows once again and dig a little bit deeper into all three of those categories and see if there's any additional conclusions that I can draw. So first of all, just looking at the cashman vesting their investing has dropped off a cliff from 2022 to 2023. They are not investing in growth at all, really. And the main reason they're doing this is because they are putting everything they can into being profitable. They've already kicked the can down the road once with a major debt restructuring. They may not be able to do it again. So they are trying to prove that they have the profits to pay their debts. If they get to the point where they can't pay their debts, then they will go bankrupt. So no more growth out of Carvana for the foreseeable future. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, please do me this one small favor and hit the like button. It makes a big difference for my channel. I would really appreciate it. And I'll continue to do my part and make better and better content. Back to the video. Next, I wanna look a little bit deeper at the cash from operation. In 2023, Carvana is claiming $803 million positive cash flow from operations. Now, when I look at the different breakdowns here, one thing really jumps out at me. Vehicle inventories, they are showing a positive cash flow of $711 million. Now, the way that you show a positive cash flow from inventory is that your inventory is decreasing. You are selling cars, but you are not replacing your inventory. They cannot have a positive cash flow from inventory indefinitely because they'll eventually run out. So in my mind, I would count against them some of this $711 million from their net cash flows because that is not a sustainable practice. In fact, if we look back to 2022 and 2021, you can see how lumpy this vehicle inventory line item is. In 2021, $2 billion they lost in cash flow from building up their inventory. And then in 2022 and 2023, they are cashing in on that built up inventory. 2022, they were able to gain 1.3 billion. And then 2023, they gained 707 or 711 million. So in my mind, I'm counting the net of changes in assets and liabilities. I'm gonna count that against their current cash flows. Another line item that jumps out at me is the payment in kind interest. This is an expense that they are not paying, which means it is adding to their cash flows. So payment in kind means that they are kicking an interest bill for their loans down the road. They're not gonna pay it. In exchange, they will pay a higher rate on that payment in kind interest. So they're not paying debt now in exchange for paying more debt later. This is another thing that I would account against their cash flow from operations. The whole point of this analysis, the whole point of them trying to be profitable is to see if they can afford to pay their debts. If they're kicking the can down the road and they're also not investing in growth, that's not really convincing to me. So I'm gonna count the assets and liabilities, positive cash flow, and the payment in kind against their cash flow from operations, which means my adjusted cash flow from operations is only 55 million, which is much different 
than the 803 million that they are showing. And then again, in 2024, let's look at the first two quarters only. They're showing 455 million in positive cash flow. Well, in this case, their assets and liabilities are pretty well balanced. They're replenishing inventory. Their accounts payable and accounts receivable are balancing out pretty much. So that's not counting against them. However, let's look at their payment in kind interest. It is ballooning for just the first two quarters. They have $285 million payment in kind interest that they are not paying. So that is artificially boosting their cash from operations by that amount. So after adjusting for those two numbers, their cash flow from operations in 2024, first two quarters is really just about $160 million. Let's assume that going forward, they'll be able to have another 160 million in positive cash flow from operations for 2024. That would put their cash flow at 320 million. Now let's take a look at the, the final category, which is their financing. This graph really tells the story from 2021 to 2022, their interest payment more than doubled, which also coincides with the beginning of their first crash. Now their interest payment has not been going down, but it's starting to taper off. In 2023, their interest payment is 632 million. And so far, their interest payment for 2024 is 346 million. Now, I said earlier that they're on track to have an adjusted cash from operations of 320 million, but they're also on track to pay a total of 692 million in interest expense. Their cash flow from operations needs to cover this number and then they're gonna have to be able to pay it off. They can't just pay interest forever. Eventually the debt is due. So not only do they need to cover this interest, they also have to come up with enough cash to pay off the debt. Unfortunately, there is another black mark on their financial statement. If I'm trying to answer the question, will Carvana rise back to $340 per share? I also need to consider how much has the company been diluted since it was $340 per share? So in 2021, Carvana had just under 90 billion shares of stock. Now today, in 2024, after two quarters, they are at 121 billion shares of stock. If they issue the same number of shares in the first half of 2024 that they do in the second half of 2024, then they will be on track to have 128 billion shares outstanding. The stock has been diluted by 26%. So each share that you had is now worth 26% less in terms of ownership of the company. And if they stay at the same pace, then each of your shares will be worth 30% less. Because of the 30% dilution, $340 today is equivalent to a $440 share price in 2021. So the dilution can really sneak up on you if you're not keeping track of how many shares of stock Carvana is issuing. Now. They have made progress on their debt. In 2022, they increased their long-term debt by 3.27 billion. But now in 2023, they're actually making some progress. They've actually reduced their long-term debt by 371 million. And currently in 2024, they have reduced their long-term debt by 202 million, which means they're on track for 404 million. However, when I look at how much of that can be explained by the revenue that they get from issuing more stock, unfortunately in 2023, they gained $453 million from issuing new stock. And in 2024, so far, they've netted $347 million from issuing new stock. So they're really only making progress on their long-term debt because they are diluting the shareholder. After digging a little deeper into Carvana's financial statements, I am skeptical that they will be reaching $340 per share anytime soon. In fact, I'm now suspicious of their current share price. There is a lot of hype around this company and there are a lot of people buying Carvana with the promise of exponential growth. But now that I know it's not a good time to buy Carvana, what is a fair share price? I'm thinking of making part two of this video if we get 50 likes. In the meantime, Check out my video on calculating intrinsic value using an automated system. Catch you on the flip side.